I'm going to talk about the retrosynthesis of Clayson and a cross Clayson and Detman condensation, okay? And okay, so what if on a test you're given the idea to make this molecule? Yeah, how would you make this molecule? Well, the first thing to me that stands out is this is a beta keto ester. And we know beta keto ester, we're looking at some sort of place in condensation, okay? So locate your alpha carbon. So my alpha carbon is here, okay? Now, the thing with beta keto esters and beta diketone is that once you locate your alpha carbon, you could split it. And then what's your beta carbon? The beta carbon is not the one that has a leaving group. It's the one that has just the, the carbonyl, but you're going to attach a leaving group there. Okay, so if this is my alpha carbon, this has to be my beta carbon with a leaving group attached. Okay, so I know I could get this from this molecule. So I could get this from this portion molecule plus, here's my beta carbon, but it has a leaving group. Okay, and there's the rest of my molecule. So that's the general procedure. And I'm going to do it a couple of times so you kind of get the gist. So I identify my alpha carbon, which is here. I split the molecule in half and my beta carbon contains a leaving group. Okay. So in this case, if we take these molecules and add sodium methoxide and ethanol, yeah, I get my alpha carbon um, to deprotonate, which is right here. And we just simply add it to the carbonyl. So it will attack and displace the leaving group. Okay. And you could clearly see that once that does that, uh, once that does that, you could see that I'm going to draw my initial carbonyl. Yeah. This is this side of the molecule. Here's this carbon, which represents this carbon. And this carbon is now going to bond it to that carbon. Okay. That has a ketone on it. And it also has um, this group here which is the exact molecule that we just, that we just, that, that we wanted to make. Okay. So you could kind of see a pattern here. Let's do another one. How about what if you're given to make this? Okay. It looks something like this. Okay. In this case, I'm given a beta diketone. Okay. And if you look, remember you say the alpha carbon is smack dead right beside our carbonyl. Okay. So if this is our alpha carbon. Yeah. So if this is our alpha carbon, you can see that we could split this molecule. So this has to be your beta carbon. Okay. So if this is our alpha carbon, this has to be your beta carbon. Now, remember I said the thing with Clayson, uh, with, whenever we see a beta diketone or beta uh, keto ester, it's coming from some sort of clayson, which means that the beta carbon will always contain a leaving group. And so if that is true, we could get this from, uh, if that is true, we could get this from acetone. Yeah. Plus this molecule here. There's my beta carbon and it has the leaving group. Okay. So if that is true, when I add base to this bad boy, yeah, sodium methoxide, and I don't write the sodium, but you get the idea. Sodium, so the sodium methoxide is going to deprotonate my alpha carbon. Yeah, so I'm going to deprotonate my alpha carbon, which is here. I'm going to add it to my leaving group, to the carbonyl that contain the leaving group. Okay, so this will attack and displace the leaving group. And so when that happens, well, what do we create? Well, if you look carefully, um, I'm just going to redraw my, my ketone group. Here's my alpha carbon. This is now bonded to this carbon that has the ketone. Okay. And I just draw the rest of the molecule. Yeah. So we formed the, the beta diketone like we just, that we, we predicted. Okay. So again, the general, uh, the general, uh, procedures that anytime you see a beta ketone ester or a beta uh, diketone, uh, you identify the alpha carbon and then you attach a leaving group to the beta carbon. Now, again, some book uses ethyl malate, some book uses uh, uh, 
uh, methylmalonate, dimethylmalonate. So again, if your book uses methylmalonate, all you have to do is attach a methyl group instead of an ethyl group. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to make this one? And what if on a test you were given the idea to make this one? Yeah, how would we make it? Well, again, identify your alpha carbon. So there's my alpha carbon. If I split it in half, if I split it in half, yeah? Yeah, if I split it in half, well, where's my where's, where's my beta carbon? I could choose either one. So let's choose this to be a beta carbon. Remember we said that if this is your beta carbon, it has to contain a leaving group. And so if I'm looking at this, I could get this from this molecule here. Yeah, where this is my alpha carbon plus this molecule here. So there's my beta carbon, but it contains the leaving group. Okay. And if we throw this in base, ethoxide and ethanol. Yeah. We get deprotonation on the alpha carbon. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to set the carbonyl and displace the leaving group. Okay. So once that happens, what's the structure that we form? Well, again, I'm just going to redraw this whole structure. So there is my negatively charged. There's my alpha carbon. And that is going to be bonded to this carbon that now has a ketone. And it has a phenyl group on the end. Okay. Which is the exact structure that we, we wanted to create. Okay. So you get the idea. You split, find your alpha carbon, and then you attach a uh, leaving group to the. Uh, you attach a leaving group to the um, to the beta carbon. Okay. So how do we make this one? Yeah, how would we make this molecule? Well, again, identify your alpha carbon. Smack that in between the, the two ketones, yeah? So this is my alpha carbon, it's right here, yeah? Now look, we have a ring set, a cyclized compound here, right at the alpha hydrogen, which means that this is some sort of diamond condensation, okay? And it's the same thing in the team, I see a beta keto ester, I'm looking at um, the fact that my beta carbon contains a leaving group. So if this is my alpha carbon, which is right here. This is my alpha carbon. This has to be my beta carbon. Now my beta carbon will contain a leaving group. Okay. So let's label carbons. Carbon says carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in carbon seven we have a leaving group. So let's 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 draw the molecule as is. Okay. So let's look. Okay, so this portion represents this portion here. Yeah, because it's ring cyclized, yeah. There's my alpha carbon, yeah. Now alpha carbon is gonna bond it to carbon, uh, the, the alpha carbon, which is carbon two in this case, because remember we label this as one, so carbon two is our alpha carbon. It's gonna be bonded to carbon three, that's bonded to carbon four, that's bonded to carbon five, that's bonded to carbon six, that's bonded to carbon seven, on carbon seven, that's bonded to carbon seven, yeah. On carbon seven, we have the ketone. And remember we said it had to contain a leaving group, so. Yeah. So we could get this molecule and synthesize it. Now, again, remember we said that number two is my alpha carbon. So if I throw this in base, yeah, I'm gonna get deprotonation, so. Yeah, so there's my alpha carbon. Yeah, it gets deprotonated. And let's count, let's count. So let's see, we have carbons one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna form a six membered ring. So we're gonna attack and displace the leaving group. Now look, on carbon one, we, we have this whole um, ester group here. So we form the six membered ring. There's our six membered ring, okay. In carbon one, we could say this is carbon one, so there's your whole ethyl group. Yeah. 
and carbon one that's bonded to six, we're gonna have the ketone, okay? Now let's look, let's make sense of it, okay? Let's make sense of it. We said carbon one, in this case, which would be your alpha carbon. Yeah, so this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice on carbon six, we have the ketone. Notice on carbon one, we have this whole ethyl group here, which is exactly what we see here. And this is how we made the, the diamond condensation of this molecule here. Yeah. So I want to look at one last. I want to look at one last reaction. Yeah. So what if you're given on a test to make this compound here? Again, to me, I see a beta keto ester. I see a beta keto ester. Okay. And if this is my alpha carbon, well, I know my beta carbon has to contain a leaving group. Okay. And so if I split this molecule in half, if I split this molecule in half, then this might become from let's bond it to this carbon. Let's bond it to a ketone that has this, this, this. So I know it has to be come from this molecule plus my molecule that has the, the leaving group. So here's my beta carbon and it contains a leaving group. Okay. Now this structure looks a little bit weird, but it's actually this. Okay. So notice that my CH3 is this CH3 and this carbon is bonded to this carbon, which is right here. And this carbon is bonded to, 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 the, to, the, to this carbon, which is right here. Okay. And that's just the rest of the molecule. Okay. So if I take this and add it in base, Okay, where's my alpha carbon? It's smack dead right here. So I would get deprotonation right here. My negative charge will go right there. Okay, and if I add this to this molecule here, yeah, this will attack and displace my leaving group. Okay, so once it attacks and displaces my leaving group, well, I'm just gonna draw from the benzene side. So here's my benzene ring which is right here. Okay, I have my ketone and this is not going to be this this ketone now is going to be bonded to a carbon that has an R group and also has this this bonded to a carbon that has and also has this this ketone group here with this ester at the end. Okay. And this is the exact product that we initially wanted. This is the exact product that we initially wanted. So you could see that the Clayson, cross Clayson, all that stuff is really not that bad. Um, the idea is that once you recognize the alpha carbon, attach a leaving group to the beta carbon.